fearful as you exit the train. Thank you for joining us for the Pondo Belize train ride. You are now aboard Baby Jaguar Express. For your safety, please remain seated and keep your arms and feet inside the train at all times. Our trusted train engineer will be taking you through various beautiful settings that will leave you with a brief insight of culture and history in Belize. Let's get rolling. strong culture that rose to its climax and descended to its collapse in a period of 4,000 years from 2500 BC to 1500 AD. To your left is a temple where priests and the elite would live. To your right is a typical kitchen structure and another for sleeping. This is where the general population would live. The Maya domesticated plants, corn was the base of most of their food. They raised stainless honeybees and traded cotton, honey, flint, salt, feathers, and jade. The Maya developed their own calendar using advanced astronomy and mathematics. The ancient Maya believed that their universe consisted of three layers. The water underworld was Shimarma, the place of fight. In the middle was earth, four-sided and floating in an ancient sea as if on the back of a turtle or crocodile. On top was the heavens, where Hamaku was the supreme god with no fear or face, who along with many gods took care of the people on earth. Connecting these three layers was the giant Saiba tree, the sacred tree of the Maya. By 380, the classic period was in full swing. This was the height of the Maya civilization, and the size and number of the large temples and the palaces grew. It is estimated that up to 2 million Maya people lived in Belize during the classic period. immigrants fleeing the caste war and was grown in small amounts for sugarcane, rapadura and molasses. However, it wasn't until the arrival of the American Confederates in southern Belize in 1865 that this industry took off. This 
This sugar mill on display on your right was made in Louisiana and brought in by the Confederates. East Indian indentured laborers were brought in to work on these farms and would remain settled to become one of the major ethnic groups in southern Belize, referred to as Cool India. Today, the industry is comprised of two big factories, one in the north and the other in the west of Belize. Over 5,000 independent farming families depend on this industry. To your left is the chicle camp in the jungle with real sapodilla trees. Charlie the Chiclero is tapping the tree for its sap. Chewing gum originated from the sapodilla tree. This large tropical tree grows throughout the northern lowlands and central Belize. The life of a Chiclero is tough as they work in remote jungle locations. Insect bites, encounters with poisonous snakes and other dangerous animals were a daily occurrence. Falling from trees was common and getting to a hospital quickly was near impossible. A chiclero like Charlie here would climb to the top of the tree using spikes on his feet, a rope around his waist and a machete in his hand. Once on top, he would proceed to make slanting gashes into the bark, working his way to the bottom of the tree. The sap would drain to the bottom where a wax lined bag would collect it. Once a large amount was collected, it would be cooked in huge iron pots, then poured into wooden molds that were sized to produce 25 pound blocks of chicle. These blocks would be shipped to Wiggy Company, Chicago, Illinois, for further processing into delicious chewing gum, such as juicy fruit and Wiggy's pear gum. The cutting of blocks took place in the dry season. Gangs of up to 150 men would go inside the jungle and set up camps. Huntsmen would locate the premium timber, then axemen like Joe to your left would cut it down. To cut apart the white buttress roots, a platform called a barbecue was fitted. Once a tree was felled, they were loaded onto trailers and were then pulled by oxen trains or steam tractor to the river's edge. When the rainy season began, the rivers would rise and float all the logs down to Billy City. Closer to the city, the logs would be chained together from one side of the river to the other. This was called a boom. The boom kept the logs from going out into the sea. When the ships arrived, their quota was released for loading. Most of our logs went to England. Our national tree, the mahogany tree, was at the most sought after wood as it was beautiful in color and was easy to work with carpentry tools of the day. Wood used for local construction were cut using sawmills and the many tools displayed to your right. Belize is very lucky to have a forestry department that manages our timber resources to ensure sustainability. <laughs> Thomas Vincent Tramas was a visionary leader for the 
Baby Jaguar Express. 